Warning, this episode contains spoilers. Viewer discretion is advised. Horses. 2,000. And elephants. Uh, no elephants, your grace. That's disappointing. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Watch Mojo. I am Phoebe. This is Nick. Hi. And today we are talking about Game of Thrones, the first episode of the final season. It's here. It's finally here. We've been waiting for what, almost two years? More than two years? It was jam packed. Uh, there was no holding back with the plot this episode, which makes sense since there are only going to be six this yeah. season. Uh, main events, we saw. John ride a dragon. Yeah, that Can we was talk about like that for absolutely a second? crazy. John uh, riding a dragon. He found out he's a Targaryen. The White Walkers uh, took the last hearth. Um, we saw reunions, meetings. Uh, we who did we see uh, meet each other? Okay, uh, we so we saw John and Bran, which was a really cute kind of callback to the first season when John is saying goodbye to Bran. Uh, he's giving him a kiss on the forehead when he's lying in his bed. Um, so when they see each other again, he gives him a nice kiss on the forehead. But Bran is very different this time around. John has not yet seen the Bran that we've come to know and love. Not sure how we feel about him. He was creepy Bran. Not yeah, he was. Bran I don't Bran. know if he ever went inside in this episode. He was just mm. kind of like hanging yeah, around maybe in the they courtyard. Yeah, just him in the courtyard. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> Staring ominously. Then there was John and Arya, which I think was the most emotional reunion for me. So that was actually my favorite scene in the episode, yeah. just because they haven't seen each other since the second episode um, of the show. And you know, they were besties growing up, they meant a lot to each other. They got to compare swords, which I thought was cute. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think that John has a lot of respect for Arya as, uh, well, he doesn't really know that she's a warrior yet, but I think that he has a respect for her in terms of, um, you know, her sort of different interest in battle and weapons. Then we saw Arya and the Hound, which was kind of like an unexpected cute uh -huh. moment. He was kind of like, well, you're alive. I'm kind of happy about that. They are you know? Westeros' funniest comedy duo. Yeah, in my they <laughs> they definitely had like this amazing chemistry while they were together, yeah, and I did. think that translated to this reunion. Then we have Arya and Gendry, and I ship Arya and Gendry 100%. one hundred thousand percent. They're for like sure. he was kind of like starstruck when he was seeing her he again. Was, he was yeah. like fumbling for his words, uh -huh. and I thought that was so cute. Um, then we have Tyrion and Sansa. Ex-husband and wife, mm -hmm. if that's what we always want to call an, them. Always an awkward kind of meeting, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but he definitely saw the change in Sansa, and we see the change too. She's definitely like a completely different character at this point than the one that we knew when she was married to Joffrey. She was kind of a bratty little girl, and she's really come into her own as a leader and kind of like the Lady of Winterfell. Yeah, I think this is the, t for me, this is the first episode where we s saw her um, completely uh, self-possessed. I mean, before, you know, she was she was pushing herself forward in the previous season, but not always at the most opportune times. Yeah. But this seemed felt like she was she's in control. She she's who she has she's she is who she is meant to be. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of people were kind of rallying behind Sansa in this episode, especially since she was being extremely critical of John and Daenerys' arrival. Now, I think she's justified in in that, you know, hesitance to trust Daenerys because John is kind of breaking promises left and right. Now, we know that it's for the greater good and we know that John has the intentions uh, to save Westeros, but Sansa is kind of feeling a little bit like, John, you're being a little bit naive. Yeah, well, Sansa's responsibility first is Winterfell. She wants to take care of the Starks, she wants to take care of the North. And John just came back and said, hey, uh, by the way, you know, I gave away my crown. She's the queen now, and also my girlfriend. And yeah. Sansa's just like, what? This was not how we planned things. Yeah, and this Daenerys and Sansa drama is giving us life, absolutely. Uh -huh. I, I feel like I was kind of worried that they would have butting heads, but I kind of get where Sansa is coming from, especially since Daenerys has been so difficult about the fact that she wants to remind everyone that she's queen at any opportunity. She's kind of always like, well, you know, Sansa doesn't have to like me, but she has to respect me because I'm her queen. Which is her response to literally almost everything. Literally everything. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that later. But the reunion that I think we were all waiting for, Jamie and Bran. Yeah. I literally, I couldn't stop laughing. I don't know why, I thought it was so funny and 
shocking that Bran was like, I'm waiting for an old friend. Like, who thought that he would be talking about Jamie? It's always awkward when you see a kid that you pushed out of a window again for the first time. I think we can and... all relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Sure. Hopefully not too much, <laughs> but we can imagine. Yeah, it was definitely a, kind of a funny, awkward moment, especially for Jamie. I think Bran doesn't really care. Oh no, Bran was like, He's just he kind knew of... that this was coming. He knew yeah. it was happening. And I think, I don't even know if there's enough of Bran left in there to have hard feelings about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it was more awkward for Jamie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Jamie's face was mm -hmm. kind of like, oh my God, he's still alive. Yeah. There's a moment in the episode that I think we've all been waiting for since the very beginning, and that's John riding a dragon, which we predicted from uh, the trailer that we saw for season eight. And how did you feel about that? I thought it worked great story-wise. It cemented their relationship together. Um, I didn't think, I wasn't super impressed by the CGI on the green screen. But um, in terms of story I, and character, I thought it fit well. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, respectfully disagree with you. I definitely thought that this scene was a little bit anticlimactic in terms of impact. Uh, John riding a dragon for like seemingly no reason seems like a weird plot device. It kind of felt more like a scene from like How to Train Your Dragon than Game of Thrones. Um, although I do understand the purpose of kind of having him have a connection with the dragons before and not really understand why. I just felt like it would have been more impactful to see him get on a dragon in a, in a time of need. I think, I can see your point, but I think that we needed this moment between Jon and Daenerys before everything goes to hell, mm -hmm. both in Westeros and also between them. Yeah, and I think that like a point of contention for fans right now is why <laughs> We had that weird scene while, while they were kissing, Drogon was kind of watching them, the dragons were watching them. <laughs> and I think that Daenerys was kind of playing it off like, oh, they're, they're being protective or whatever. But I think that the reason that they're looking at him like that is because they sense that daddy's home. Uh, and he's here to stay. So I'm interested to see where that is going to go. Okay, so we have to talk about the elephant in the room or lack thereof. Cersei in this episode, something is going on with her. Now, this is the scene that we talked about in our season eight trailer breakdown where Cersei looks like she's been, uh, you know, awoken from her slumber, which it turns out that she has just laid with Euron Greyjoy. <laughs> laid, that's a great way to put it. Supreme asshole Euron Greyjoy. Um, what do you think's going on Master with her Master creeper, yeah. Euron. Um, I think that, I mean, at first, I have to admit, I was surprised by Cersei's decision to sleep with him. <clears throat> However, I think what's going on is that Jamie has left her. She doesn't have anyone else to back her anymore. Um, she needs Euron's fleet, and so um, she made a difficult choice, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely thought that it was a weird moment where she chose to invite him into her chambers, especially since she had just said like a really powerful line. She says, you know, if you want a whore, you can go buy one. If you want a queen, you have to earn her. Um, but Cersei's in a really weird place. And I think that something that people are talking about right now is that she might be pregnant with Jamie's son or daughter. Um, however, I don't think that that is going to happen. That is not what was prophesized. Um, she may have miscarried and maybe that's why she's having such an emotional response to Euron saying that he was gonna put a prince in her belly because she's still sensitive about the fact that she maybe had a miscarriage. What do you think about that? Uh, it's possible, I hadn't even thought of that. I had imagined that Cersei and Danny would both find out they were preggers and we would both have pregnant queens. I don't know, <laughs> but it's possible. Two miracle babies. Two miracle babies, yeah. yeah. Another major plot point in this episode is sort of Sam's reintroduction to the main story, essentially. Um, he finds out that Daenerys has killed his father and his brother, um, which is sort of an awkward conversa conversation, right? Yeah. and. Uh, Possibly Daenerys might be starting to have misgivings about burning <laughs> burning people alive, let's hope. Yeah, I don't know if she has any misgivings about that. She didn't seem that she felt too bad. I think she's finally facing head on, the, you know, the consequences, the consequences of her actions. Of her actions yeah. But really the victim in this situation is Sam. Like we, we love Sam and it's really, really hard to see him in this state. Mm -hmm. And I think that finding out about the fact that his father and his brother were killed at the hands of this new queen. Who was his uh, best friend's girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Gives him the motivation and the courage to tell John that he is Aegon Targaryen. Mm -hmm. So that's like a 
really, really powerful scene between two people who have, you know, an, an unbreakable bond, essentially. They're, they're very close friends, best friends, and uh, it's kind of an awkward conversation. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's awkward for everybody. It's awkward for Daenerys when she's telling Sam. Um, and yeah, it's awkward for, uh, I guess, both Sam and uh, and John to find out, to, to talk about his true, his true parentage. Yeah, I definitely think that John has this kind of adverse reaction that I guess we could all expect from somebody who thought that he was someone else's entire life. Um, but what does this mean for his relationship with Daenerys? What does this mean? What do you think that John's next move is? I think that John, I don't think he's gonna come out and tell Daenerys, but I think he's gonna give her the cold shoulder. I don't think he's gonna be down for any sort of Targaryen incestuous relationship. Well, Game of Thrones is definitely no stranger to incestuous relationships, and neither is the Targaryen family, which I think a lot of people are forgetting about um, in terms of being like, oh, you know, like Jon and Daenerys can never happen. Well, you know, the Targaryens have a history of incest in their family, so I don't think that that would be like a deal breaker, maybe for Jon, but uh, I... think Danny might be open to it, but I don't think Jon is gonna go for it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, here's the thing. I want to know whether or not John thinks that he has any reason to tell Daenerys about this because John is such a noble character and really his intentions are only to save Westeros. He's never shown any interest in having like a, a, a role of power. So what? who's going to tell Daenerys? She has to find out. Yeah, I think that um, he doesn't want to rule. He's never really wanted to be king um, and to admit to Daenerys who he is would be the same essentially as making a claim on the throne. Yeah. So I think she, it's gonna be someone else who- Yeah, and her. that could be like a major conflict in the relationship to have, you know, your new boyf boyfriend be like, oh, sorry, I'm actually your nephew and I'm actually next in line for the yeah. throne. So I think that will be a huge plot point in the episodes to come. So I think overall we can both agree that this episode had a lot packed in, but it was also a lot of callbacks to the first season and the first episode specifically. The opening scene of this episode was a young boy who kind of looked like Bran running, uh, you know, around Winterfell with, you know, John and Daenerys arriving. It was kind of like when King Robert was arriving in Winterfell and he climbs up into the tree and then we see, you know, it's kind of coming full circle. John is the one arriving in Winterfell. Okay, so now we have to talk about you know, kind of the final shot in this episode. A very dark, very disturbing part. Um, I thought that this was like the scariest moment in Game of Thrones yet when we see poor Ned Umber dead on the wall. Just became a lord, didn't last very long. Yeah, this is insane. Okay, so let's talk about this sort of pattern that is kind of a recurring thing throughout the series. We've seen it a few times. Um, in the first season, we saw it um, with the Children of the Forest. So nobody really knows what this means. Nobody knows what it means. It is very similar to the spiral pattern of the stones um, around the Weirwood tree where the children created the first White Walker. Um, we also saw it at the Fist of the First Men. Now we're seeing it again. Other White Walkers communicating, other just, you know, kind of throwing it in everyone's faces like, hey, you did this to us, now we're gonna we're gonna use the same symbol for what we're doing to you. I don't yeah, know. I think that a lot of people are kind of surmising that this is a co-opted symbol from the Children of the Forest. What it means, we're not sure. I think that we can kind of deduce that it means like we're here and we mean business. <laughs> and it's really disturbing. Like th there's all of these severed limbs and this poor sweet boy is dead on the wall. The, the moment that he opens his eyes and screams, I literally jumped out of my skin. It was so creepy. I, I just like could not believe it. Let's just take a look at that for a second. From the Night King. His arm is between us and Winterfell. We're on foot. We rode down from Castle Black. We can double up on the horses. If the horses last, we'll get there before the dead. We just have to hope the Night King doesn't come for <laughs> <laughs> that was a great. That was a. That was a great end to the episode. Yeah, that was <laughs> absolutely insane. Insane. They mean business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after the episode dropped, we got a trailer for the second episode. So theories. 
Okay, so we saw more tension between uh, Danny and Sansa. We saw tension between um, Danny and Jamie, mm -hmm. um, who killed her dad. Um, we also heard Danny saying, "You should never have trusted Cersei." So presumably, Jamie has revealed that Cersei is planning to betray them the whole time. We saw Arya uh, shooting an, ar an arrow, talking about death, as she likes to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we also saw John asking, "How long do we have?" And we saw some of the preparations for the Battle of Winterfell. Is it possible the Battle of Winterfell is in the next episode, or are we just going to see the preparations for it? Yeah, I definitely think that the Battle of Winterfell is coming. Whether or not it's going to be in the second episode is up for debate. I definitely think that second or third episode is most likely. However, the thing that struck me the most about this trailer is Jamie being on trial. Mm -hmm. I felt like there was a lot of tension that people kind of didn't anticipate between Daenerys and Jamie. As at least I didn't anticipate it. I completely forgot about the fact that he was Kingslayer because his character has had such a redemption arc that we've all kind of forgiven him for what he did. For viewers, it could almost feel a little superfluous. I think. Yeah. He's been a villain. Now he's a good guy. We saw him explaining to Brienne in the bathtub why he did it. We know he did it because um, Daenerys's dad was crazy and was going to kill everyone. Hopefully, Daenerys isn't going to linger on this fact because, in the end, we all know that Jaime did the right thing. However, we also all know that Daenerys can be a bit of a hothead. Now, in our community tab on Watch Mojo YouTube channel, we asked the question to viewers: Do you think that Daenerys would do the same for her people that John has done for his? Which is a callback to the question that Sam is asking John. And what do you think? So, I think that Daenerys is definitely going to face a choice where she has to choose between the Iron Throne and her people and Westeros in general. I think that's been foreshadowed. Um, by the scene in the House of the Undying, when she has to pass the Iron Throne in order to reach her dragons, I also think it is what would make her character more interesting again. Going from a sort of one note, "I'm the queen, everybody has to obey me," to having to face a moral dilemma where sh she has to um, weigh what has been her main motivation through the whole series with the welfare of, of, of Westeros and everyone else. Now, here's where I disagree with you. I think our viewers overwhelmingly agreed with the fact that Daenerys would not do the same for her people that Jon Snow has done for his. I think that she's exhibited this really, really hot-headed behavior. Uh, she's made it very clear that the only thing that she really cares about in this situation is that everyone recognizes the fact that she's the queen. So, for example, when Sansa shows a little bit of pushback when she meets Daenerys for the first time, Daenerys pretty flat out says, "I don't really care if she likes me. I just want her to realize that I'm the queen." And I think that we're all getting caught up on titles and stuff. The White Walkers are coming. So, like I said earlier, when Daenerys finds out that Jon Snow is a threat to her title, I really don't think that she will respond well to that. I think that she will have a freak out. It's just, it would be totally uncharacteristic of her to just be like, you know what, it's <laughs> fine. I think she's gonna freak out, but I still have hope. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess we'll find out in the episodes to come. I think that's all the time that we have for today, Nick. Thank you so much. Let us know what you think in the comments below, your predictions, your questions, and uh, we'll see you guys next week on Monday for a Game of Thrones breakdown. Bye. Bye guys.